Hey y'all, <clears throat> Data Guy here. And today I have another viewer request video and a video that is especially pertinent in light of recent announcements by DBT where they're deprecating DBT Core and DBT Cloud and unifying on just one DBT Fusion engine. Um, and it's a whole other video about that if you wanna go check it out. But from that, uh, I was prompted to take a second look at SQL Mesh. Um, and so what SQL Mesh aims to be is, you know, kind of more of a full platform experience than DBT, but to accomplish a lot of the same use cases that DBT is doing today. Um, and really providing a data ops solution on top of it. So it's not just, you know, hey, you know, structured SQL queries, but it's actually testing environments, it's ability to deploy it, collaboration built in. So it's really more built for enterprises out of the box versus DBT, which is more of a lightweight thing that you kind of need to build the infrastructure for under the hood, uh, unless you're using DBT Cloud, in which case you know, you're, you're just paying for that, right? Um, so that is what I want to go into today. Um, so basically talk about, you know, hey, why does SQL Mesh exist? What are some limitations of DBT that it's you know, aiming to address? Uh, and then I'll talk about with some examples, you know, how do you set up uh, SQL Mesh and show you how you can get started using it and kind of how models are in you know, transformations and generally how SQL Mesh works uh, and all the core concepts there as well. So without further ado, let's get into it. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe. It helps me out a lot, but let's get into SQL Mesh. So one of the major quality of life and kind of value adds to SQL Mesh is that it really is aiming to be, you know, not only just, hey, we're gonna run your SQL scripts, but we're also gonna check them, help you optimize them and build in things like column level lineage so you can understand how data is flowing through your pipelines. Um, so SQL Mesh will actually, as you're writing your SQL queries and, and run them, running them, it will provide recommendations um, and understand, hey, this is actually an issue that you should address, or this is running inefficiently, um, which then helps you run SQL across many different engines you might be running it across more efficiently. Um, then also in tandem with that, you have the concept of virtual data environments within SQL Mesh. Um, so one thing that you're gonna be, you know, and anyone's doing when you're trying to get data in production is you gotta test your DBT, you, know, you gotta test all your transformations, on dummy data, on test data. Uh, and doing that with DBT, you know, you kind of had to build the CI CD around it to tell DBT to switch to a, you know, your dummy data, your test data, and then switch to prod data when it's in production. Um, versus SQL Mesh has the concept of basically these virtual data environments, which are dedicated environments that you can test and validate your uh, workflows and do, you know, unit testing, audits, data diffs um, before moving into production. And you don't have to design all of that out of the box. It's just something that is packaged into SQL Mesh. Um, and then also in tandem with that, you have full CIC integration. Um, so, you know, just basically CIC built into SQL Mesh so you can collaborate and, uh, and then have, you know, each branch of your CIC pipeline mapped to a different virtual data environment. So it makes it really easy to track changes as, you know, your, your code gets pushed and, and tested also so you have easy linkage to, hey, this code push and the testing of that code push to make sure it was actually validated. Um, and just all leads to much more quality deployments of code and much quicker and, you know, just more efficient CICD uh, processes. Um, and some of the major, I'd say, benefits you have over DBT is, you know, it's, it's much better development cycle, uh, much better, you know, for people that are less experienced with writing SQL. And, you know, you can have SQL Mesh kind of put and help optimize it for you. Um, and also you have things like, you know, data aware evaluation and diffing and full metadata tracking as well. Um, so you have more of a deep understanding coming through the actual transformation tool rather than through, you know, your database or through the workflow orchestration tool you're using to manage your DBT jobs, right? Um, typical thing is, you know, you'll set up Monte Carlo to work alongside DBT, but it's a pretty painful process versus this has that lineage out of the box. So now that we know what SQL Mesh is, let's actually start using it so you can actually see it in practice um, and see how it works. So first thing we'll do is just CD to a repo and then just create a new repository, directory, SQL Mesh exam, exam, and then CD into there. And it looks like I forgot I already have a SQL Mesh. There we go. And then CD into SQL Mesh, or yeah, already CD in there. Um, and then what we'll do here is we're going to first pip install SQL Mesh. So it's a pip package, so pip install SQL Mesh here. Um, it's just gonna install all the different packages that we need uh, for actually running this. Um, and let's see, let's see, uh, source compatible. 
Da, da, da. And then what we'll do is just click this and go SQL mesh init duck db and just run a local duck database. Um, so if you're not familiar with DuckDB, just a super lightweight document database you can run alongside your uh, home environment. And then what we'll do is go open this file that we just created. So go desktop, repose, SQL mesh exam, and you'll see now we have the scaffolding, uh, very similar to a DBT project, but instead now for a SQL mesh project. Um, and so here you can see we have you know the different audits, and so audits are certain positive order IDs, basically conditions that you need to have be true um, for it to pass that audit. You also have macros similar to DB, or DBT, where they're just basically structured, templated uh, steps that you know you want to be reusing across many different pipelines, many different projects. Um, you also have the models here, so models in SQL Mesh are essentially you know your models within dbt um, so these are a sql or python file so it can also be a python file if you don't want to use sql that defines a transformation here um, and so you'll see here you know in this example um, we are defining a model um, which is going to be selecting item id and then counting the number of distinct ids as the number of orders from a sql mesh example um, which is actually another incremental model so it's referencing the output of another model so if you have that transitive kind of function output similar to dbt as well um, where this is also pulling in from the seed model so this is actually seeding the data pulling some data from just a local csv just in this example um, and then pulling out selected columns with the grain of you want to have, have the id and event date um, and you can see also here here's our seed data as well um, and you also have tests here so you can actually test a full model too um, so if you want to apply you know different conditions and different states on your model you have the testing as well there and then here under config, this is similarly again to dbt where you'll add your connections to things like DuckDB or any other type of database that you might be using. Um, so this, you know, just is a general file structure of a dbt uh, environment. And so first, what we'll do, you know, to actually get started using SQL Mesh, um, we need to first run SQL Mesh plan. Um, and what this will do is generate the plan and go th read through our models, read through the relationships in there, um, and then generate the you know, plan or basically the structured flow of how our models are going to run in sequence. So here, if I run SQL mesh plan, this will, if everything goes correctly, generate a plan. You can see it updating in the files over there on the left um, and generate an output um, that's basically you know, running the tests against our DuckDB for our data um, and then initializing a production environment here. Um, and so this is effectively now creating a new environment that we can run our SQL transformations in, test locally, um, and gives us all the information around, hey, so line three notes that this was run successfully. Five is you know what environment this plan is going to affect. So if you want to run a plan for a different environment, it's going to, or you would add an environment tag and say, hey, run it in dev instead. Uh, it'll show you the models that were going to be executed by the plan um, in sequence. Um, and then also any backfills that are needed. Uh, you can set the start dates. So in this case, you know, start dates from 2020 uh, to 101. So if you go actually to an incremental model, you'll see start 2020 0101 um, and incrementing from there. So it tells you, hey, we need to backfill all that data. Um, and then what we can do is if we apply Y and backfill those tables, you'll notice it will actually backfill um, those tables and return the output, um, which here we're going to create and store new versions of the models. Then it's going to evaluate and run the models. Then it's going to update that plant's uh, environment. Um, and so you can see here the basically completion of the first step, updating that physical layer, then executing each model, um, backfilling them for the previous uh, pieces of you know previous date range so you can see here we have dates that went all the way back to 2020 um, and then finally just you know showing that that was all completed and updated in the virtual layer so now let's say I want to add a new column here right so let's say if I go into my incremental model here what I can do is replace this with a new model uh, where I'm just adding a new column here um, and then what this will do is uh, if I add a new column is going to just change the plan for that model, right? So now if I run SQL mesh plan dev, what that will do is create a new plan with the same data, but with the change I just made in a dev environment. 
um, and you'll see that it's going to say I directly modified uh, this environment, so it's going to call out the changes I made, show here that I added this Z new column, that it's going to be different from production, um, and it's non-breaking because it's not actually going to destroy or uh, break any existing schemas in production, so I'm just adding a new column. So here again, I can press Y, backfill, and then that will run this for, you know, that same backfill process for those date ranges with this new model, with this uh, new environment. Um, and so then what you can do is if you um, query data from, so if I run here, uh, SQL mesh fetch DF from the incremental model, you'll see what this will do is basically fetch the example result from that incremental incremental model that I created with the new column Z. Um, so you can actually fetch the results of a you know, project within a dev environment or a single model within a dev environment as well. So just really, really easy to test um, these changes and also see the outputs. So now uh, what I can do is if I want to then take these changes and move them from uh, dev into prod. Let's run SQL mesh plan. And then what this will do is plan and add these changes into my production environment. Um, so here it's going to see, hey, this is a non-breaking change, same output as I got before. I can apply this virtual update and boom. Now my production model is also updated um, and I can validate that again just by running SQL mesh, same command, but for my production model. So you'll see here, fetch DF and here I'm going to get it from my production model and now you can see my new column in my production model has been updated. Um, and that's really the basics of SQL Bash. So really just aiming to be more of a full stack tool uh, than DBT, have all the tools for you know testing, validating, integrating um, your workflows alongside it. Um, so yeah, tool I personally think is really cool. I'd love to see the development of it. Um, and I'm really happy DBT has a little bit of competition now. Um, but hope this video is helpful. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.